Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to kick off today with a special selection, which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from Spiderland, Krongbin, Friday Morning Live. So that's what we're going to check out. It took me a while to figure out the pronunciation of this band because they don't seem to like to introduce themselves. I watched two interviews and eh, they did an NPR tiny desk and didn't say a single word. I, I kind of admire that. <laughs> they got in, they played silence between tracks, uh, and then they just finished it up with a bunch of, you know, really quick, like thank yous and, and stuff like that, but all like body language, not a single word was said. So uh, it took me like the third interview to, to find somebody who actually pronounced the name. Let's dive into this Friday morning. Wait, it is Friday morning. Whoa, I totally didn't plan that. Let's go. It's bizarre because I see all three people doing vocals, but I don't hear three voices. I think there's a little bit of production magic going on there, but it's quite possible they all just have very similar timbres. Yeah, I felt that retardando, very, very subtle, but enough to anticipate this slower tempo. Assuming that this live performance is the audio I'm hearing, There's a lot of gain put on the drums. Tempo shift back up. Wonderful production. Are we cross sticking on that snare? Yes, we are. Okay. A 
see a keyboard over there too. What a way to end it. Oh, it's not over. Interesting idea. Interesting having the the shorter bass notes under the floaty guitar. I'm not I'll hold on to it. I think I've heard them before. I'll have to uh, check it out. One of these thumbnails that have been suggested to me though looks familiar and I'm pretty sure I saw it in Discord. <clears throat> All right. So they're, they, they're, I was going to say they're firmly rooted in, in a style, but then I don't think it is a firm rooting. I, I do think it's a melding of two things. They're obviously have a really big psychedelic element to them. It's what crafts all the slowly mutating emotional parts of the atmosphere. It's the heavy drenched g reverb on the guitar. It's the chill, laid-back element. It's, well, even the vocals, the way they harmonize, the way they're produced, the effects on them. There's a really big 70s vibe to this overall, but it's paired with... a very light funk. I think a lot of it comes down to the jazzy drumming. Very light, effortless, uh, and minimalistic. There to drive the beat, and that's about it. The bass is paired well against that, having a nice moving line. That keeps the song pushing forward, and the bass and the drum create a rhythm section, and not too dissimilar from the way that jazz tends to create it. And, 
funk kind of, I don't know if funk came from jazz, but funk shares a lot of similarities as far as the rhythm section goes with jazz. <clears throat> so it, it's sort of like a jazzy rhythm section with funky syncopation. Nah, it's not really syncopation, is it? It's just a funky accentuation. I think that's what it is. It's It's the way that the bass tone resonate so strongly at the beginning of a note that's what really feels funky about it and you pair that with the psychedelic 70s guitar work and you get Kurongbin or at least you get this song I don't want to extrapolate and say that this is what they do I've only heard one maybe two tracks again uh, it's possible I've heard another one I want to touch on a couple of things, though, because if we just go with what's on the paper, what would be on the sheet music, it it really isn't a lot. This is a fairly simple track. To me, a lot of the things that make it stand out come through the complexities of the creation process, not necessarily the composition. One of the things I really want to touch on is the drums. I I don't quite understand what's going on with them. They're they're simple. We had quarter note hi-hats, we had one section with eighth note hi-hats, which is just twice as fast, and snare on the backbeat. No, snare on the third beat. Yep. So a sparse snare, very jazzy it's not one and three it's not two and four it's just three of every bar one two ka four one two ka four it's very chill and laid back the few times that the camera panned over the drummer you can see that there's no arm movement whatsoever it's all wrist right very light effortless drumming that if you've ever played drums like this or actually i guess if you ever played drums period and you want to get that rock or metal sounds you'll realize how important it is to increase the velocity of your your arms to hit the drums harder and faster with more force and one of the easy ways to do that is arm movement. If you're just going to move your wrists you're not going to get that type of volume and impact that you're wanting. If you play or have listened to jazz drummers they tend to be a bit lighter. They're hits don't quite have this impact in some of the lighter jazz. You can certainly get into some of the heavier jazz uh, and find some, some drummers who play quite a bit heavier. But it, a lot of this mostly wrist stuff is going to be light. And this doesn't come across... It, see, here's, the, here's where my mind kind of has this disconnect. There is a lightness to the attack, but a weight to the volume. And this is why I mentioned during the video that there seems to be uh, production going on in the drums. The drums should not be this loud. They should not be this prominent. They should not be this wide. It's It feels like there's a lot of gain put on them and quite a bit more compression than I would probably do so for this style of playing. And that intrigues me. I, I don't think it sounds bad. It's certainly not wrong to go about producing or playing drums like this. It's just very different. And different can either be exciting or confusing. And in this case, for me, it's confusing. The more I listen to it, you know, the more normal it's going to become. As with anything that's outside of the norms of one's listening experience, outside of one's experience in general. But it is something that stood out to me quite a bit at the beginning and continued to stand out even towards the end. It just doesn't sound natural. And that's fine because nothing sounds natural.
The guitar is drenched in reverb. He plays once and it just echoes as if he's in a, a, a very small cavernous hall. The sound continuing to bounce around and rever reverberate off of the small area. There's a soothingness to the electric guitar as well. It's kind of has this uh, sultry allure to its tone. The vocals reverberate and weirdly enough combine it, it doesn't matter who's singing they all sound like it's a singular voice or it's vocal Vol voltron I, I i don't know that i've ever heard anything like this before usually i can separate out harmonized vocals and here i, I just couldn't at times i kind of feel like i heard the guitarist voice but it's it's fleeting. It's like it dips out of out of the 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 blob, the sound blob for a second. I can distinctly say that this is the the guitarist vocals, but it quickly gets gooped back up into the amorphous sound. Nothing feels natural in here, and I think that's why the drums being so loud, despite being played so timidly works in many other contexts it wouldn't these oddities don't stop at the production either there are compositional ideas in here that i find a bit odd phrasing that doesn't quite fit the norm and even there specifically at the end, I think the most prominent idea of this is moving from the faster tempo to the slower tempo every few bars. It really felt like a transition idea that ended up not being a transition idea. And I was like, oh, maybe it's just a longer transition. And then it, it became the section. It stuck around long enough. I couldn't ignore it anymore that this was just what the section was. And by the time I finally came around to accepting that, then we moved on. And it did feel like it was a nice transition from where we were prior, about a minute ago, and where we were going to end the track. It felt like every time I tried to define it, it defied my definition. And the whole song kind of feels that way, too. And I think this is where a lot of my appreciation for at least this song is going to come from. On the surface, I really thought I understood what this song was right from the beginning. It's very psychedelic. It's got a strong bass line underneath the guitar and some light drumming. I understand what this song is. 30 seconds in, 60 seconds in, I knew what the song was, but it quickly let me know that I didn't, and every time I felt like I could reclassify it, it changed direction again. And so that's why I wanted to start this analysis section off with that very bold claim that this is just psychedelic with a little bit of funk or jazz. Because it really is not that, it's more than that. That is, I still think, the foundation of everything, but to me, what this actually is, is sonic experimentation. They break the mold in so many different ways that none of them seem odd because they all collectively break the mold in similar ways that the oddities are no longer odd because they're in a pack of similar oddities. This is now the norm to be odd. And that's what I really like about it. I don't know that I would personally want to listen to a lot of it. It's not my cup of tea. I think I would be, no, I am interested in a few more tracks, but if they're all very similar to this, I think I'll be happy just having experienced it and knowing what it is more so than doing a full album into it. But I do really appreciate how far they can say, okay, this is our baseline. How can we meddle with that? How can we 
change it up? How can we emulate this while making it our own? And the cool thing about projects like this is that I don't always know that that's how they set out to do it. I'm kind of curious if this is their first album or not. If is it, is this something that they've worked towards and built up their sound over time and we can see snapshots of that work throughout? Or did they just grab some instruments and this is what came out of it? I can't really tell with something like this, at least not with more context. But I do find that really intriguing about it because it feels experimental in a very natural way that doesn't feel experimental. I think the last thing I want to touch on before I go in search of some lyrics is the roles that every instrument plays. I already kind of mentioned a little bit of this. The bass and the drums are the rhythm section. They keep the time and they keep the harmony, chord progression. The bass gives us a lot of information about the foundation. This allows the guitarist to go do whatever they want. And it's interesting to hear what the guitarist chooses to do with that freedom. The vocals, I'm not even going to say carry a melody. A lot of the time they're foundational and or atmospheric, however you want to read them. They're moving chords, technically. That's foundational information, that's emotional resonance, but they also set up the airiness and the moodiness and the feeling of the atmosphere of the song. That really only leaves the guitar lead melody. And the guitarist rarely chooses to take up that mantle. We do get some melodic lines. We have the guitar solo, but again, still sort of interested in texture and atmosphere throughout most of it. And so what that does is it sort of honorarily makes the bass the lead instrument. It has a moving line, quarter notes throughout most of the track. The notes are constantly changing pitch, so we have a melodic element. It's just not as free form as melody should be. The rigidity of the rhythms mixed with the almost predestination of the notes since they're designed to follow the chord progression and not be a melodic component again, only makes them an honorary, honorary melody. And so there's this push and pull, this fighting over who will do what role, but where most bands will have this tug of war between two lead lines, I want to be the main line, and another person wants to be the main line, and so you kind of have to you, you create this dance about who's doing the lead. You can do call and response that way. You can do dueling melodies, you know, counterpoint. You know, there's, there's a lot of ways to handle this. This feels almost like the inverse where everybody's fighting to get away from the spotlight. Nobody wants to be the main instrument. And so everybody consistently sort of ducks out of the way and the spotlight swings back to somebody else. So they duck out of the way and the spotlight tries to highlight someone else. And it feels like a bunch of instruments avoiding the lead role. <laughs> and so again, it's, it's this subversion of expectation. It does something that I wouldn't expect from the styles of music that they're working within. It just continues to surprise me around every corner. And I don't know what to make of it. That's why I want to listen to a few more and kind of see. Again, like I said, it's not really my cup of tea. I don't know that I would listen to this personally uh, just for casual listening. But I do think I want to experience a little bit more and kind of see what they do normally. Because, you know, you can't judge a book by the first line. I'm not going to judge a band by a single track. This could be an outlier for all I know, and the rest of their album is death metal. You know, <laughs> you can't know with things like this. Um, but I do want to get a better feel for them just because I, I'm really intrigued about the way they go about creating music. It's just, I don't know. They're working with the same 
tools that everyone else is. They're just making very different pictures out of it without really changing anything up. That's the bizarre part. I'm going to find some lyrics. We'll move on from there. All right. So a couple of interesting things. This comes off of the 2018 Con Todo al Mundo. It is the final track on the album. The Genius Annotation mentions that Friday morning sees the band experimenting a little bit with their sound. That's as much as is written about the music. But again, it does make me a little curious about what they normally do. It doesn't say that this is massive uh, deviation. It says they experiment a little bit. But it does make me curious what was experimented on and what is normal for them. Lyrically, it's a love song, but quite sparse on lyrics. Our verses are two lines each. The chorus is four lines each, though, of course, they're repeated. And the bridge is a lot of vocalizations, na-na-na-nas, followed by oohs. The verses say you are pretty colors. I'll find you in the morning. One dream to another, I'll fall. And you'll come with me. The chorus says you get lonely when it's cold, but you've got fire. Find you, find me. Let's go and burn together. The idea of two people coming together and experiencing life together. I don't know that I would... I don't want to draw parallels between the music and the lyrics. I don't feel like there's a lot there. I could possibly grasp at straws. We had the idea of a dream, me being a dream, you being a dream, and sort of the ethereal swirliness of the song, the psychedelic elements of it feeling very dreamlike. But I also think that that's just probably their style of writing music and the lyrics are secondary. The fact that I can find a parallel there doesn't necessarily mean there is an intended one. And for the most part, emotionally, I don't feel that this is a love song at all. Maybe that's because it isn't over-the-top sappy with its emotional resonance, but it also just doesn't come off as that. I don't really have a strong read on the song, but it's more neutral and chill than positive and in love. But maybe that's also just the kind of love that this person is feeling. The one that just comes natural. You don't have to work to make the relationship work. It's, you just do your thing and they do their thing and you all exist in perfect cohesion. Maybe in the end, that is what the song's supposed to be about. I suppose you could find a love song in the music. That wraps up my thoughts on Krang Bin's Friday Morning. Let me know your thoughts, comments, perspectives, and opinions. Drop that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you can find a link to Linktree. It takes you to this menu. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Yes, they are fixed for the first time of this year. <laughs> I greatly appreciate all three of those. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening. Whenever you choose, watch my videos.